does it go in? Good, good. All, All right. right, and today's just chops in we have with Davey Ebbs, obviously, me, Ian. I can never say your second name. Sapolka. 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 Oh, so oh, Sab Sapolka. That <laughs> <laughs> didn't sound like what Ian said. <laughs> Ian, Ian Sapolka. And uh, he's from uh, God. Oh, fucking hell! I'm, I'm all over the shop now. I don't know what I'm doing. He's from Gone Savage. And we are with David, who is. Who are you, David? Me? Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, a contributor to Uber Rock, basically. Oh, I keep fucking muting myself. Uber Rock, and what is Uber Rock made? It's an internet based music fan music website. Okay. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Um, well, it's it's one of those huge, well paid jobs. You okay, know, yeah, like this. You get to do things for nothing, yeah. <laughs> right. You sometimes get it, well, no, I get it a lot of gigs. Um, okay. So I do a lot of gig reviews. I do gig photography. I write album reviews. Um, this is a bit of a sideline for me. So that's basically um, what I do. But now I've, uh, I am no longer a member of the working class. Okay. Because yeah. I've reached that age. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to do a, a bit more with, with you all because I haven't got to work anymore. Um, and I'm going to start taking over the, uh, not that I'm a, a real, as you can tell, not that I'm a real techno whiz. I'm going to take over the social media stuff and, oh, okay. um, and the videos that they upload to their YouTube channel. What I'm really interested in is I'm going to do a podcast, uh, which is why I thought I'd join you guys to try and get, a, get the word out there and B, find out how, not, how, to, how it's done properly. Yeah, I was going to say, how not to do it. <laughs> yeah, how not to do it today's about right, I think. Well, he, to be honest, right, Ted, he is a bit of a technical whiz because I remember turning up to a place called, I think it was Wolf Rocks or the Wolf Festival when those damn crows were on stage and Dave did all the sound. Mm. Yeah, they just did. They just did three sets of download, and then they did it on the back of a truck. That's right. So I set up the sound and uh, did the sound for the crows. Uh, there was a whole day as well, but by the time I said to Dave's uncle John, I said, "Look, you know, by the time I get to everyday heroes and those damn crows, the sound would be spot on," and it was. And I wouldn't yeah. mind, but it was the first time I'd used the PA system in anger. So that wasn't bad going, was it? No, it was very good, mate. Very good. It's a good festival as well. So I've been doing this now um, for about eight years. Okay. So I do, like I said, the photographs on the wall behind me are all my photographs from uh, bands that I've seen. Um, I just printed a couple off just to give you a bit of a background. Okay. Um, but, I, but I covered everything from Joe Bonamassa to um, The Darkness to Blackstone Cherry to you know, uh, any of the big gigs that go around Cardiff, Cardiff and Bristol. Uh, did Alice Cooper, there's one of Alice Cooper there somewhere as well. There's okay. Alice, um, I saw right behind the end, you could just about make it out. Yeah, with um, uh, Neatless Strauss. And yeah. There's the guy from Parkway Drive in the bottom right, or my my right anyway. So you've been, oh yeah, like you said, you've been doing it a while then. Yeah, oh yeah, I've been, I've been doing gig photography since about 2015 but mainly small venues, and that's my biggest interest. Although I do the big gigs, because A, I like the music, and B, if I can get in for nothing, I'll take the money and run. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, um, I, I've got this bit of a um, soft spot for small venues. Okay. Um, and I like to cover the, the sort of up-and-coming bands in the smaller venues, rather than, as well as the big ones. So yeah. they get exposure as well. So that's basically what my podcast is going to be about. It's going to be looking at um, the small venues and the up-and-coming bands um, and the, the, everything that's going on with the small venues at the moment. So I'm not going to say any more. And actually, it'll spoil my first episode. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's it's it's, it's an interesting... Um, interesting... What's the word I'm looking for? Arena at the moment is the small, the small venues. Okay. But not just, but not just around Wales because we got people in Uber Rock 
that come out of other parts of the world. I mean, the, the, the guy that runs it is from Belfast. Um, okay. we, we got team members in the north of England, so he covers Liverpool and Manchester. We got somebody else that does the south coast. We got somebody else that does the Midlands. Um, so I'm trying to, and we have got one in, one nice international uh, gigaholic who's actually based in Holland. Oh wow! Oh, who's that? Uh, Justin, Jason, Jason, something or other. Not that I would know him, but yeah, but he, he's always at gigs in in Holland. Oh, is he? Yeah. Dave, how come I never heard of this guy before, man? Who oh, me? Oh, Jason. No, no, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the other Dave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which guy you haven't heard of before, Dave or Jason? This Dave. I've mentioned him loads of times. No, you haven't. I've been trying to get. Do you know what it is, Dave? I've been trying to get him to do reviews for three years, and he never done one. He just done one the other week. I've done one. Yeah, one. And it was um, it was a beautiful one. It was. Be honest. It was beautiful, but that was the like first that. one he's done in three years, and I've been trying to find somebody to do reviews for us, <laughs> and uh, I couldn't find anybody. I know, to be fair, Dave's been super busy because he was working full-time as well up until... July? Yeah, a couple of months ago, do you know what I mean? So he has been super busy. So um, when I when I do see him at gigs, he's, he's working as well as enjoying the music, do you know what I mean? So, uh... Yeah. But well, we did want photographs as well as reviews. Mm. Didn't we? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm sure Uber Rocks wouldn't have mind sharing their... Uh, well, I don't, like I said, I don't mind sharing my stuff. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I, they, because they get me into the gigs, they get first pull. Yeah, of course. Obviously. I mean, the, the next gig I got is actually uh, Scarlet Rebels in Thecla in Bristol. Okay. Which is a nice little venue. Yeah, okay. I'm away for that. I'm good. Well, we probably could have got people in gigs. That was That was my old shtick when we first started, you know what I mean? was to build it up, get people in gigs, get reviews, because most of the bands that we interview anyway, like Scarlet Rebels and stuff we've had on the show, we can mm. probably get get somebody in on the gigs anyway. So, But that was the whole thing. That was my whole plan behind it. But David um, didn't mention anyone he knew or met anybody like you. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for that, Dave. Not you, Dave. Well, we've, Dave. I find the... We know Gary Spiller, we know Doc, we know do I mean, so I have I have Yeah, Doc didn't really come through with any and well No, I know, but, I know, you know, I know. And Gary obviously works for somebody else. He does, yeah. Matt uh... I mean, like I said, I can show you the Uber Rock website if you want. Oh, I can look it up. You have to turn the sharing on, but uh... Yeah. I can, I'll look it up in a bit. Yeah. Anyway. How are you, Ian? I'm good, thank you. Cheers for you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say yeah, right? Because <laughs> I'm not really, but I'll say yeah. Well, I've been poorly. Nice tea. Nice, nice motorhead t-shirt. Nice. Yeah, nice. I nearly always wear a motorhead t-shirt, mate, to be honest. Yeah, would you? So, uh, yeah, but Facebook, uh, Facebook, fucking, I've got Facebook on my brain now. Motorhead t-shirts are a big thing in my wardrobe. <laughs> I don't wear my Iron Maiden one very often because my missus don't like it. Yeah, it's all good. But uh, my, I, I think my internet is breaking up as well today. No, I sounded okay. okay yeah, did I? Oh, it must be. It must be your internet, Ian. Yeah, uh, no, it's fine. Okay, cool. Guys, what... is it mine? It could... Yeah, it's yours then. Oh yeah, you are breaking up, mate. Yeah. Um... Go and stand by the router. P in the meter, dude. The thing is, these really big walls. How's that? Is that any better? It might be. Yeah, that's yeah. better. Yeah. Where I stood, there's like um, two foot walls. <laughs> so, oh, okay. I'll just see. <laughs> no, you should see. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. You just need to stand by the router, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I can still reach my bit. So, anyway, gone savage. How's it going? It's going really well at the moment. Uh, really busy at the moment because we're doing our second album now which yeah. is coming out 25th of october that's called retrograde <clears throat> so we've been in between times we we met we met you guys about two years ago i think myself and will came on the show and um yeah you did we would released a digital album called past life uh, which mm -hmm. we did and then that got picked up by a company in um, pennsylvania called heaven and hell and they repackaged it 
for as, as light and black and white as a CD. So many thanks to mm -hmm. albums for Pro so One. So, um, but we've gone with Muzzle Records in Los Angeles for this next one, Retrograde. And this week we're releasing, um, well, it's coming out on Spotify this week, Run Me Down is our first single from the album. It's so that's, and I've been pushing around all the radios and it's been getting really good pickups. So I'm really pleased about that. And then we're also looking for the reviews on the album. So hopefully, well, a couple have come through so far, but we're hoping to get most of them in by so like mid-October. Okay. And then we launch the album for the 25th. So, yeah, it's busy on that side. Um, I'm trying to write as well at the moment, I'm trying to write, believe it or not, being a greedy person, I'm trying to write the third album now. So put that on the back burner. So for, for now, it's social media. As, as we all know, it's the bane of our life. So Yeah, be, yeah, yeah. I see, be, I've seen your Facebook post earlier about the, you being blocked again. <laughs> Yeah, it's so frustrating because you want to do the right thing, and as I say to people with social media, it's not, not about doing too too much. Just just follow the pace and like the like the comment, or just interact in some shape or form. That's all you have to do, really. So all we're trying to do is to reciprocate that outward, and and you get done for spamming. And you think, yeah, yeah. I'm winning because you want us to bring in these people for you to make money on whatever revenue advertising whatever we're doing that bit for you and then when we want to sell it back to them and say we want a bit more from you personally you say no you can't have that and it's a really really bad state of affairs so this week as a for instance got loads pick up on the radio and loads of people selling it and putting it selling it putting it out and promoting it and i can't go and thank them yeah it's mad I don't like it in real life. I certainly don't like it when you have to do it because people are helping you. And then you the system. And I just can't find a way around it, Ted. I can't. No, I know. It's crap. Do you mind if I ask what genre it is, Ian? Rock. Uh, we're rock music, uh, Dave. Um, we liken ourselves to anything from like 90, 80, 90s band like Dokken, Rat, that kind of US sound. Mix it in with a bit of Def Leppard. But what we've done is we've written, I've been writing for a long, long time, and, and now we're trying to move away from that classic. We don't don't not like it, but we, we write songs now that aren't really any kind of fixed genre. It's rock music or pop music, whatever. That's what we're trying to do with Gone Savage, trying to bring it away from what it was into a more modern kind of uh, era and sound. And I think we're doing it, but it's, it's gradual, it's not overnight. And so we get lots of references back to you're a classic rock band and you're, you know, you're basically a UK rock band. Fine. I don't mind that, but we're trying to be a bit more than just what was. We're trying to be a bit more current. So we're kind of, we call ourselves rock rather than heavy rock or classic rock or metal. Well, as, as, like I said, you, you can guess my reason for asking. Yeah. yeah do it for you, mate. Here we are. <laughs> I know some of the guys that can't quite remember Belfast, didn't they? Mark, yeah. Yeah, Mark. Monk. Mark. So I'm sure you've done a review of, not you personally, but I think your company has done a review of certainly past life. I'm sure you did. So, but yeah, must send it to you. I'd love you to get some feedback. Yeah. Like okay. I say, email, email, email it to barockkicksass okay. at gmail.com. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Dave. Well, I'll tell you what, Ian. I mean, I put a post up the other day about your new single, and i got to be honest, I think it's really good. Oh, thank you. So, no, and I was really, I was really, 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 really surprised to see that you put it on Spotify. But that's probably to do with your record company, then. It's not my choice. No, you know, I know. Uh, yeah, I, that's another one of my bees in my bonnet. Because along with people like Facebook, Spotify. Oh, I, I, I've been right around the, cir the circle on that with different people who have different agendas and different reasons for doing what they do, and I get it all. But what I say in my context it doesn't work for me. And and I, I do loathe the fact that people can try and not even buy and also the numbers games. So I said to Muzzle, I said, I'd rather you didn't because what I want to do is protect you because they're distributing out a whole load of CDs and I want them to make their money back. I don't want them to fall flat as a Spotify. So I said, just hold it back and move the CDs to people who generally want to buy it and hear it. You have that facility where you might be able to stream, you know, taste us 30 seconds or whatnot. Yeah. And and, and uh, the guy came back and said, absolutely no. And he's like, okay. And the reason why, and I said, well, 
as long as you want to take that risk and you're prepared to take the what you perceive as a, a gain against the financial loss potentially i said yeah. you know, crack on uh, but but i didn't want to do that so to be fair he said no no i'll take all that and i went oh, uh, fine i mean from, from from my perspective you know being a contributor um i've i've got a spotify account hmm. and i find an awful lot of music on there if i i, I pick up the band's older stuff before i go to a gig to see what it's like so that i know what to expect so you know i mean for the new stuff that's coming out i mean uh, i understand the financial aspects of spotify i really do and i think without getting into any risk of any legal um, uh, trouble here, you know, we all know the financial aspect of it. It, you know, it only makes common sense to people that have more than millions and millions of copies. Yeah. You know? Um, some, but for a band starting out, it, it's probably one of the, and, I'm, and you've been in the game long enough to realise, it's probably one of the ways that they can only get their music out there without costing too much. Yeah, the SoundCloud, there's, there's various platforms that have come and gone. Yeah. And um, it's a fair point, really. I mean, and they always look at it and say, well, the opportunities are there for you to do X, Y, and Z. And I suppose that's true in life. You know, we could all be rocket scientists, of course we could. Well, I couldn't. <laughs> you can. It's how much do you want to put into that to get to that end goal? And if you even want to stop. Yeah path that's the point and and so yeah of course the opportunity is to do wonderful things doesn't work like that it really does not work like that it's um it's a bloody minefield but i get your point about you know listen to something get acquainted with something and as a service for a consumer i think it's brilliant but i think for, for a consumer it works for a long long. Long. Unless you're a multi-million selling artist, it doesn't. No. I think it's you, yeah. It's yeah, it's fine. Fine. Is it me? No, 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 it sounds fine. It's me. Yeah. I, I'll be honest, I, I, I use, I do use it the same as Dave, really. So if I go to, a, I'm going to a gig, say if I go to a festival and there's a pile of bands on it that I don't know, I'll check them out on Spotify first. But what I do do is when i go to the gig or festival i'll go and buy a cd or i'll buy a t-shirt or something as yeah. well to support yeah. the band david, david you took uh, the words right out of my mouth there. i was going to say the same thing yeah yeah so make a point of buying a vinyl cd merch anything just to, to just to make sure yeah because at the end of the day i mean i know people that run venues i know people that pay bands to go to venues and i know people that pay bands very little to go to venues um and the the um, the financial penalties on touring is huge. Mm. You know, I mean, the the number of venues in the country is collapsing tenfold. Mm. You know, it's it's dropping like flies. Um, and the to go from uh, to make a, a tour cost effective, you basically got to cover practically the entire country and zigzag you there and everywhere. And then it's not cost effective because of all the mileage and all the cost of hotel and everything else that goes with it. It it makes touring difficult, um, but it also is probably one of the only ways that people pick up money is from selling merch. Yeah, it's fair point, not there. <clears throat> What, what are you thinking of touring this this new album? Yeah, the, the next year. Well, don't know if you know our history of despair, one of a better word, Dave. Uh, we struggled years and years and years to have a permanent guitarist. So, a lot of the work that's been done on these albums has been all people that we brought in. You know, and um, we never managed to find anybody. But I've got a bit of an announcement this week. Hopefully, we've got somebody for doing our live work now. So we've got a, we've got a band, so to speak. So yes, that means that hopefully twenty five we'll be able to get out and do some gigs. Cool. There will be there will be loads and loads, but there'll certainly be some decent gigs. And I think we seem to do really well down south and so southwest and you know South Wales and down the south coast. So with a listenership that is you know people who want to get involved so hopefully they'll come and see you so yeah 25 that should hopefully start seeing it out more 
and then going from that then yeah of course I'd love to get onto a lot of gigs and potential to go away and play in the Mario as well I believe yeah. well that'd be cool eh? um, I yeah. that's a that's a good way of getting against the engagement yeah the now I kind of I, did, I used to work with a guy called Peter Keeble and manage or manage with him a lot of bands um guerrilla riot scam people like that um and we used to try and book them into all kinds of places usually it was about 18 months out so like now you want to have a hope really for next year mm. done dusted and i got in touch with dave o'hara he runs all the wild and that one's fully fully booked now for 2025 he said i'm looking at 26 currently and you think there you go and i keep saying to people like we're sitting with being gigging well, well Look into gig that you know you need to be well ahead of the game. You can't be saying like two original bands. Um, I want to play next month. It doesn't really work like that. It just can't work like that. So you have to be you know a bit more pragmatic. So yeah, hopefully get a few gigs in early part oh, twenty five, and then a few more toward the latter end, and then maybe twenty twenty six start doing a full kind of like you know fifteen day tour doing that kind of thing from so recently so uh, yeah definitely want to do it though yeah best, oh, place, good. best place to uh, put your music out by far yeah yeah, definitely. You know, I picked up loads of bands through. I, I only go to a couple of festivals. So I go to Steel House. I go to Winter's End. Sometimes I've been there and I've, I've gone to Planet Rock. I tend to try and avoid the, the bigger ones, to be honest, because I ain't into big crowds and I don't want to stand four miles away from the from the, um, from the the stage, do you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, having said that, I have managed to, you know, pick up quite a few bands and then I've started following them as well then. So... Yeah. You know, I know Steve does the same as well, mate, doesn't he? Yeah. You've, you've done yeah. the same. Well, recently, Nozfest, um, I did that. And next weekend, I'm going to the New Wave of Classic Rock at the KK. That's a full weekend, 16 bands, 45 quid. That's a very, that's a very despicable attraction at the moment, wow. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's, I've done that the last, well, this will be the third time I've gone there. First time at Nozfest this year, and third time at the KK for that New Wave of Classic Rock. It's a brilliant weekend. 45 quid for a weekend. That's a bargain, that is. I paid 40 quid, but it's 45 quid now. Wow. I don't, I've got no clue. Scarlet what... Rebels headline that. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody was frozen on my end, so my... oh dear. Oh. I'm having a disaster. <laughs> Well, I hope it's re- I hope it's recording okay, because it's from our end as far. Well, my end is fine. It should be, it is recording, but from, from mine it's all frozen up, so. Yeah. Anyway, I've, I've, I've been distracted. I don't know if it's on live stream now or not, so I haven't got my phone with it's me. It's not showing live. No? No. God damn it. That's <laughs> not <Stop and> start. <laughs> but yeah, you know, maybe, maybe uh, when you know when you get up and running, Dave, perhaps you can have Ian on and, you know. Well, you know, I, I, I'm looking for, I'm not looking for content because I've got an idea where I want to go with it. And I want to cover sort of all, all aspects of, of um, local venues. From, you know, the promoters to the bands to potentially the technicians that run these venues to, um, you know, the new bands that are up and coming to, to, to look at everything from beginning to end, you know? And then potentially hook in with record companies and talk to them and PRs and all those sorts of things to mm. have the whole process um, as, as, as a unique entity and the podcast I'm going to run is probably only going to be about half an hour each one um, I can't see well i got plenty of time to do it but ultimately I come to the conclusion that if you can do 30 minutes people will sort of pick up 30 minutes mm. um, and walk with it and, and you know just try and keep r- r- roughly to 30 minutes um, because they can do it when they walk with the dog, they can do it when they're driving to work, all these sorts of things, you know? Yeah. So that's, that, that, the, looking at all the stuff that they say that makes podcasts successful, it's having a plan and having a content that just rolls from one week to the next. And because I'm going to, every week I'm going to talk to the people around the area and say, what's going on in your area? And look at the news that's going on in the music, see what's released to push people to the website and all these sorts of things. That's the whole plan for the podcast. 
Yeah. Good, mate. Sounds good. Good, good plan. That was a plan for um, a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they say about the best league, the best league plan, then. <laughs> <laughs> they all go to shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, we've been at it for a while now, so we're still plugging away, do you know what I mean? We had a few months off last year, but, uh, yeah, we, I'm, and I've been really lazy, actually, trying to get guests on. David's been even lazier, so that's, uh, we, we we need to kick ourselves at the backside, really, Dave. Yeah, we do, yeah. I've, like, like I, you know, talking about going to the, the festival and stuff, I, I got, in my phone i've probably got about 20 guests lined up ready to come on but it's just connecting all the dots really um but um yeah well you know my schedule so you just need to connect the dots i know i know <laughs> i mean the thing is because i'm free and easy well maybe not so easy but free you've always been easy <laughs> <laughs> don't tell everybody dude you know <laughs> because i got like i said because i got access no work access to me i got the ability to do it whatever time the guest is available so you know it'll just be a case of um, um, it's going to be recorded and edited and then posted so i just got to build up the content um and see where it goes from there but like i said is there's so many people around uh, and whilst i'm looking at it from various aspects part of that is because of my youngest you know i mean he's in the industry he, he does lights and sound okay uh, um so and he's a musician he's a guitarist but he's in a band now that they started to get right and now he's got a regular job rather than freelance light and sound he um they're gonna try and start to do a bit, again a bit of gig, gigs are they because they've written the whole albums with stuff uh, and well, he's written not they he's written the whole albums with the stuff for them okay. i mean it's like um i asked him could you do me 20 second riff in this style this genre um and, and this 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 and i give about five different genres they give me the same riff five different ways he did it in about half an hour yeah you know because he, he didn't realize how good he is um but that's you know that's there for me to tag onto the onto the podcast sort of thing yeah so it's going to be a, a multimedia job to a certain extent okay very good. I yeah, look forward to seeing it. Yeah. The first one's going to go out on this, I think it's 2nd of October. Okay. I've got it planned for the 2nd, Monday the 2nd at 7. And what, okay. what um, platforms are you going to stream out on, Dave? Well, basically, I, 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 I my favourite price, right, is free. Yeah. Okay, I like yes. free. Free is my favourite price. So what I'm going to do is I'm currently using the free version of uh, Riverside, yeah, uh, which is the well, the podcast recording software, and the free version of version of Buzzsprout. Okay, and they'll distribute it for me, so I, I can cope with that because they, they just keeping it to half an hour, I yeah. don't have to pay them. They'll do it. They'll do all the hard work because they can, they can do all the techie bits and just upload it to all the different platforms. Okay, so they can go through to YouTube and everything. Well, and it's, it's. I heard you mention you've got Spotify. Yeah. And you've probably got the paid version of Spotify. Yeah. So why don't you use Spotify for podcasters? Well, it'll go on there. Well, like I said, I, 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 I'm going because I can edit this. I can do everything within the Riverview, Riverside, whatever it is. Oh yeah, yeah, Riverside, yeah. In, in terms of editing and you know, recording and the old nine yards, so that's. That's the plan. I mean, I, I want to keep everything as tidy as I can, basically. Okay. So I want to learn 16 different programs because I'm fed up of doing that for work. Yeah. Okay. Because I use, like, uh, I've got, like, a video editing software that I use. Yeah. And, yeah, I've always used it because I can do quite a lot with it, to be honest. But that costs... Well, that's, that's... I think it cost me about 120 quid a year, I think. Yeah, well, like I said, because I'm a photographer, I got um adobe so i got i got uh, not adobe yeah you know i got uh, photoshop and lightroom yeah and there's there's the video but i mean you start paying more the more you start paying more the more stuff you use you know so i thought i'd rather just use something that is fairly straightforward 
And with the Riverside one, if you want to delete text out of it, you delete the text out of the car, out of the written text, you know, yeah. and it'll take it out of the video. You're going to fag you around with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've looked at that Riverside, but I haven't really looked into it very far, you know, because I looked into a few other things as well, like um, what was that other free one? I found it really complicated. I can't remember what it is now. Uh, those damn crows use it. Uh, if you, like I said, I looked around a couple, and and with, because I've done during the pandemic, because there was a lecture, I, I've used, uh, I've done online recording, online lectures, and it was a similar, it's a similar layout to the program that they use at the university. So, well, I don't got to learn that again now. Okay. So it, it means that I am going to start from scratch, which which gives me the opportunity to edit it fairly quickly. Anyway, not for me. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Ian's muted himself. He's, he's fed up listening to me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so how have your uh, gigs been recently then, Steve? Because you've been to see the Rebels. Yeah, Rebels. Um, oh, God, like I said, KK. I've, I've just seen it, Dave. Now going to KK next weekend for the new wave of classic rock. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's a, it's a brilliant weekend. I say this, this I love it up there. We'll see, going up there again to see Scarlet Rebels the following week because I prefer going to the KK and the Thecla. We make a sort of a night of it as well and stay overnight. And, yeah. Um, and then, oh, i got Shark Fest in the Patriot. That's coming up on the 12th of October. Okay. What's going on in Shark Fest, Steve? Because I got the Patriot as well. Yeah, there's 10 bands on the Saturday, the 12th of October. Oh, I should reach your headline it. My birthday weekend. I think. Ah, uh, right. Okay. And um, then a new one for me is in Kung Khan, the Fork and Tin Doomsday Outlaw, and Austin Gold are playing there. Right. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, I saw that advertised yeah, somewhere actually. Got ten quid a ticket. Yeah. You know, for so, it's a Friday night. A couple of my mates playing. Uh, well, they used to anyway. Austin Gold, actually. Yeah. I know Adam, the keyboard player. I know I've known him for. Oh, in since 2008, I think. Yeah. And the drummer, the old drummer, they used to have a drummer called Chris Ogden. Right. And he's left now, I think. But uh, yeah, he, he was a drummer in my band for a while. Mm. He's a nice kid too. So yes, yeah, yeah, more well. That particular night, there's with Doomsday Outlaw and Austin Gold, there's four bands playing. For okay. It's a tenor. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous money. Yeah. You've, got, you've got to buy the merch, haven't you? You've got to buy the CD. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know. They're pretty good, they're Master and Gold, actually. Mm. So, uh, when are you going to first start gigging then, Ian? Next year, we'll say it's the uh, day before, but the um, <clears throat> plan is won't go through it all again. But we, I think we finally found a permanent guitar, well, permanent, a regular guitarist now. We've been, you know, I don't know if you know, we struggled for ages to find one. So yeah, I know, yeah, I know the story from yeah. last, the last album. That's right. So we've always had hired hands. So we've got a guy coming on board. Uh, announcement this weekend, all being well. Uh, looking at trying to get into some festivals next year. We know it's going to be tight because they're normally 18 months out. Yeah. So we'll probably do a few little gigs here and there. And then 2026 is probably when we're going to really hit it hard. Do some decent dates. Um, hopefully, do some dates next year. Definitely think we'll do some. Yeah. We're not sure. Maybe. More likely, probably in America, to be honest. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, are you going to try and book them all yourself, or does your label come with a booking agent? They, in, they'll they do anything stateside. Um, I'll do mostly the stuff over here because I know the demographic and also know the pitfalls. I've done it before with uh, different bands. I was saying to Dave about that. I used to work with Tamar and Peter Keevil. Yeah. And so I know what's out there. It's not really good. <laughs> it's shite, if I'm honest. But, um, you know, I know the pitfalls, so... Look at odd gigs next year, and then see how we get on from there. Tez, yeah. that's what we're going to do. Did yeah. he die, Peter Keevil? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he but died. I hope so. He hope he died. <laughs> no, I don't hope he died. Uh, Did he die? Well, I, I had a story. I had a story about Peter Keevil. I wasn't sure if he died or not. Honestly, hmm. I don't know. Like well, I don't want to speculate because I haven't uh, spoke to him for a while, but uh, Facebook-wise, now I'm not seeing much on there from him uh, other than he's pushing his bands, and that was about a month ago. Oh, he's not dead then. No, no, but uh, about a year ago, he had a bit of a funny turn. And, he had you know, an heart attack, didn't he? 
something like that, yeah. So, mm. sorry, I'm not being wishful of the, you know, ill of the... Ill <laughs> of the living. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll, I'll move on from that one, Seth. It's a bit <laughs> when, in, when in holes, stop digging. <laughs> yeah, right. so, uh, yeah, live work-wise, yeah, I hope to think we'll definitely be out and playing gigs next year, as many as we can, really. And yeah. I'll, I'll still say to, to Dave before as well, the majority of the people that follow and so sort of like supporters and radios, people, punters, whatever, are down the southwest and south uh, coast. So happy days, you know, come and see you. Yeah. Not yeah, you. You, but, so, you, know, you can maybe. see me anytime, mate. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, Holland, we've got quite a decent uh, hole in there. That could happen. Yeah. yeah. Could do. Yeah. I should go to I Holland. To get a... I should go to Holland. I know a man that can review it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All sure. But uh, yeah, I've been trying to get bands to come to Holland for ages, but yeah, you know. That was this Brexit nonsense is uh, a bit more it's difficult. Nearly impossible. Mm. Yeah. Uh, um, well, mate, uh, a fam ex and family member uh, played in. I think he did a couple of gigs in Amsterdam this last week. Uh, Chameleons. Have you heard of those? No. The Chameleons, no. They're, they're from the 80s. They're, they're a really good band, really good band, indie band. And they, they sold out all the gigs this week in uh, Holland. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're originally, man, well, they are still man keen. But um, yeah, they get around all over the place. But uh, really good band, different music. It's not rock or metal or anything like that. It's yeah. like more indie sound. But uh, yeah, they did really, really well this last week in Holland. Mm. They may be changing, who knows? Yeah, you need to find out how they do it, man. Yeah, yeah. They plays over here quite a lot. The Raidens, I've seen them over here a few times. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. I've seen them popping up to there in Holland uh, quite a few times. But I've seen them, when did I see them last year? Yeah, it must be last year now. Yeah, I saw them at, at one of the festivals. Uh, cool. Yeah, that's another indie band, but not quite rock. Since oh. we're all rockers. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe more will be coming about now with Oasis coming out, won't they? Do you know what I mean? I might oh. have a bit of a resurgence of that kind of music, you never know. Well, wow. yeah, it might be, it might be. But uh, has anybody been following the news this week? Uh, I've seen a couple of news things come up, but uh, like a woman got a calf muscle bitten off by a shark. I oh, did she? Where was that to? Um, I'm not sure, oh, actually, but it, I, I thought it would have been a, sea, I a tiger shark. <laughs> not in Tenby, was it? No, 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 not Tenby, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've also heard if I don't put this phone down very quickly, I might get blown up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was pretty rough, wasn't it? Yeah. Joker is bad, though. Yeah, well, I, that's, well, I just want to know why they didn't why they didn't do this twenty five years ago when pages were actually a thing, you know. But you never know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So page on your belt. And uh, yeah, very weird. What's it? The Israeli. Well, I tell you what, right? Going forward. Guy in it, don't they? No, 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 no. But they won't, will they? Because it's gonna gonna start flipping. Mastery in the war, I guess. Yeah. But um, what was I going to say? Yeah, yeah, that opens the door for all sorts of possibilities, doesn't it? You know, because you could have a bomb in your phone, you could have a bomb in your television, you could have a bomb everywhere now. Yeah, yeah. Like you can hear me. Like you had a chip, like you had a chip in your arm and make your COVID jab. Yeah, exactly. Stick it anywhere. You know, if they don't kill you with COVID, now they just blow you up instead. I reckon. Is <laughs> it right? We'll pick that group of people over there on on the housing estate. Make sure they all buy this tally, and then we we'll blow them up. Yes, offer. Yeah, hmm. yeah, that's the way to do it, isn't it? Yeah, it's all going to be uh, it's all going to be going wrong. I'd be all right. I'm too tight to spend my money anyway, so I don't buy anything. Yeah, me. So <laughs> I it's it. if they put it in bad merch, I'll be nagged. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I can see it going wrong somewhere. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. What was that thing you posted about um, Sir David Jason as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, do you know what? I shouldn't really go... I, we shouldn't really say about things like that because it's been a bit... Well, what it was, right? Okay. All this thing about P. Diddy's coming out now, isn't it? 
because P did it, right? Yes. And, yes. you know, we had the Epstein thing, and now we've got this P. Diddy thing. Yeah. And we've got all this stuff going on, you know, with all these people at the BBC, if you like. I was going to say something rude then, but I shouldn't really... So they're just picking on every. They're just picking on everybody then at the moment. Well, it's it's domino. It's going to be a domino effect, isn't it? And it's all going to come crumbling down, you know, from the royal family to everybody else, I think. And um, apparently, uh, David Jason let his couple of mates use his house a few years ago, and uh, they were assaulting some young boys. His wow. mates were. Okay. David Jason was out of the country, apparently. Yeah. But there's stories coming out that uh, he might be... Um, they, I think they're going to wait till he dies, and then it's going to be a bit of a Jimmy Savile moment, I think. Yeah. Oh, I hope not. Yeah. Hope so. Not. He's a national treasure, isn't he? Well, they all were, weren't they, to be honest? Jimmy, Jimmy always looked a bit dodgy, didn't he, to be honest? And people knew yeah. about stuff, but David Jason is an absolute legend, isn't he? Yeah, I think he is as well. I, watch, I, I still watch only fools and horses now. Well, it's class, isn't it? Got a bear. It's just absolutely awesome. So I really, I really hope not. I really yeah, I hope not as well. To be honest. Yeah. Cancel culture. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's not about cancel culture, is it? But you know, because he hasn't been cancelled, has he? But uh... well, he did. He got didn't he? Didn't he? He had a job, and three hours later, they sacked him or something. Who? David Jason, he's supposed to been doing something recently now. Yeah. And um, within three hours, then they, they kicked him off the project, whatever it was. Why? Well, I don't know, because maybe because of the alleged, alleged, alleged statements that have come out about him, I'm assuming. I don't know. Well, they'll be associated now with it, they? That's, the... that's the trouble, isn't it? That's, 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 that's the problem now. When when somebody says something, you, you, you're scarred for life, isn't you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether it's true or not. It's... Guilty until proven innocent. Yeah. You are nowadays, yeah. That's, yeah, and that's, that's the downfall of social media, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's rough. Really, you know. really rough. But, uh, I mean, you had this thing about Hugh Edwards in the week. Yeah. You know I mean? He's got away with a murder. He was also a, a bit of a national treasure, really, wasn't he? I mean, he was yeah. a correspondent for, to the royal family and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and now he's, um, what did he have, six months suspended for two years? or? Yeah, he's got a wheel. Something wrong. I've had he blamed his wife, eh? He blamed most of it on his wife, and I, I don't know how his wife stood by him, to be honest. Yeah. She haven't. She left him, haven't she? Has she left him now? Yeah, I think so. Mm, good. Sure. I, did, I thought she was still with him, but uh, no, I thought she'd left him. Turned around and blamed it on his wife and mental health problems. It's come back. Sense, isn't it? Most of us got wives, and most of us got mental health problems. That don't mean they don't give you the right to go into what you do, is it? At the end of the day, if we got one, you definitely get on the other. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It comes to cut this package deal, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. I'm glad know. I got headphones on. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Mike can hear everything, but I'll have a beat him when I go downstairs. That that comes with it as well, so that's fine. <laughs> Not that I condone it, but love a bit of that. <laughs> and did you all see uh, the old video from Jane's Addiction? Yeah, well, Terry Farrell. Uh... Oh, he got punched. Beefing up Dave Navarro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. on stage, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, what it was, uh, uh, from what I've I've read about it, at the last few shows, he's been getting really drunk, that Farrell. And he's just been like, uh, you know, he's always got a problem. Um, he's got some mental, obviously some mental health problems, but he's got some addiction problems as well. And uh, he's been like chugging on bottles of wine on stage and he's just been going off on these like incoherent rants. And one of the past gigs, Dave Navarro just like did a really sharp uh, guitar sound to sh to make him stop talking and carry on with the song. And so they've been having a bit of a beef about it. And uh, now he was saying that the music was too loud on stage. Yeah, that's what I saw. So you know, so uh, he had to go at Navarro again. But yeah, this yeah, this yeah. just it's all down to booze and drugs and whatever. I, I reckon. So, but yeah, it's a bit of a shame. Bit of a shame for old Jane's addiction. Yeah. They need to be like Blaze Bailey when he's on stage. He only drinks water. Puts yeah, well, oh, I saw a thing about Spike. Uh, Spike's giving up drinking, haven't he? 
Oh, that'd be good if he has. Yeah, apparently he has. No, oh, good for him. I saw him uh, make a post the other day. He was with somebody, and he said uh, somebody was he was with someone. I think he might have been with um, John Karabi. John Karabi had a drink, and he said, "Oh, John's having a drink, and uh, I'm off it." So excellent. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Good for so they, they both had the same clothes on from 10 years ago or something. He said, <laughs> this picture. He said we've both been photographing the same clothes on from 10 years ago, but John's having a drink and I'm, I'm off the booze. So yeah, good for Spike if he can manage to stay sober. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Because, you know, now that uh, choir boys dispute has all been settled, hasn't it? Because... Mm. Uh, because <laughs> 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 that uh, the, the, the other band is changing their name, so... Yeah, good. That's good news. Yeah, just hope he doesn't get too resolved in there again. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. 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 that's a twenty. Like a few times live, he's absolute class. Class <clears throat> live he is. Yeah, he was drunk when he came on the podcast, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I missed him at the Patriot because he was drinking with one of our our mates at the Patriot. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Him. Allegedly, yeah. yeah. And he said, oh, I remember when you went on the podcast. <laughs> he couldn't remember. Yeah, he said that, and he actually said, yeah, I was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him. Um, who did I see him? Planet Rock. I think I've also seen him in maybe in the Solus Bar in um, Cardiff and a couple other places. He's it's a couple of years ago, Dave did as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just phenomenal life. Really good. I don't know how old he is now, but his, his voice is still great. Yeah. Well, he's, he's not as old as he makes out, then. Eh? Also, what, what did he say on the podcast? I can't remember, but he said something about if they got his age wrong on Wikipedia or something, they said, didn't they? They had got his age wrong, yeah, yeah. They made him older than he was, didn't they? Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. but... Who knows? Drink, you know? like, he don't look as good as Marco because Marco's been off for 30 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah got any gigs coming up, sir? Me? Yeah. Um, Maybe south of Salem in November. And... Do you want me to send your T-shirt over now, then? No. Uh, at Christmas? No, or... I'll, have it, I'll have it at Christmas. <laughs> What's the other band? There's a band playing in the afternoon as well. Um, Blackstone Cherry, maybe? Oh, they're good. Uh, they're not bad. Yeah? I enjoyed them up Steel Oaks, yeah, they're brilliant. Uh, God, I've seen them on every tour for the last 10 years. Oh, have you? Yeah. But they're all playing in November, that's the only thing. The Dan are also playing in November. I really want to see the Dan, but they're all playing in November, so... Can be but... a couple of busy weeks then, are they? No, I'm not going to them all, because two of them are Amsterdam. Oh, okay. so one of them's in Eindhoven. Blackstone Cherry Gate's in Eindhoven, and the other two in Amsterdam. So, oh, that's close, though, isn't it? Eindhoven's all right, isn't it? Yeah, Eindhoven's on the other road. I got to make a decision between the Dam and South of Salem. So I think it's going to be South of Salem. I see the Dam. Going to have to be South of Salem, yeah. Plenty of times. It was a good show at Steel House. Well, we were yeah. there. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Show was... see you after the gig to see him in the tent. Yeah. yeah. David was there as well. Yeah. He's in. Absolutely mm. awesome. But I think it's only the second time I've seen him, but man, do they put a show. So I professional. Saw, I saw I saw him. Oh, hell. The first time I saw him was in the Doll's House. It's probably about 2018. Yeah. And they were good then, yeah. but they are so much better now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well professional. The Doll's House is really open now. New owners, and they have as a music venue. Well, they are putting a music venue yeah, back in, yeah. they? Because the the previous owner stopped it, didn't they? Well, they're they're, they're getting it now at the moment. It's it's, it's about eight hundred yards from my house. So, <laughs> it's oh, is it? Are you? Another another gig yeah. for you, mate. Another venue right, for you yeah. in South yeah. Wales. Yeah. And you can crash at Steve's house yeah. as well, eh? <laughs> 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 Keep the names up all night. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> We've got a couple of good, good bands coming in mind. We've got um, these Wicked Rivers are coming back in November to the Met in, in our town. So they were there last year. That's, that's, that's the venue that my son has his light and sound job in. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's seen with a band called These Five Years. It's sort of pop, pop punk stuff. 
Yeah. Uh, you got to say, he wrote it all as well. So he's written yeah. all the new music. Ah, cool. Um, <laughs> I had a laugh. They, they they played their first track that he recorded on Adam Walton's show on Radio Wales. And Adam Walton said, oh, these five years, they haven't, they haven't seen them for a, a few years. He said, the last, the last time I played anything was 2018. It's nice to know that they got somebody that can sing. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> is that Welsh years or is it English ears? Years. 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 No, as in time. <laughs> These five years. Yeah. These five years. <laughs> it's all the same. It's all the same over here. <laughs> See, over here. The year, year, and year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I did say to him, I, I said when he's um, when he's playing next, to give me a shout, and I'll uh, well, I, I'll probably find out through you anyway. But um, I said we'd definitely come up and watch him. Yeah, I mean, um, they said they're looking to get a couple of gigs because they they, they got a link with somebody who wants a gig in Cardiff. Um, I need some Barnstable with I think. Okay. So um, he's got a following in Barnstable, and Jim's band got a hell of a following in Cardiff. Brilliant. I went to the um, the first gig that they did, and the place was sold out. There's 120 people in there. Awesome. Um, and it was, <laughs> I was at the front, and Jim and I played the last song. Next thing I know, now Jim's not a little lad. Next thing I know, they had him up in the air crowd surfing. Never. Yeah, they, they, I thought, my God, they're stronger than me. They get older. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, they 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 good musicians. To be fair, I I remember seeing them the dragon play with the original singer, and I thought, well, they're good musicians. All they need is a singer. Yeah, yeah. Mm. There's a lot of bands like that, though. To be honest, yeah. I mean, a, a singer will definitely make or break a band. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. A decent singer, like. So I'm just waiting to be picked up by Amber somebody. I gotta be honest. I'll pick no, you up when I come over, Dave. I couldn't hold a note if you put it in the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know. So I don't know. We'll do some covers for Christmas when we bat and we'll release them. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where we'll release them, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's if I can walk. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. So I will wheel you in. No, Shelly said she's not going to push me around anyway. Didn't she? No. That's terrible. I know. I'll make her push you around, don't you worry. I'll make her drag you. <laughs> <laughs> She'll probably drag you before she pushes you, to be fair. <laughs> probably, I don't know. But, no, my hip seems a bit better today, actually. But, uh, yeah. I don't know what they're going to do about my hernias, but... Mm. Who knows? Wait and see. Like I, I just dying to get back training. I can't get back training. Even though I hate it every minute of it, I still want to do it. Well, the, the lads in work took a piss out of me today. It was they would quit my fair play done because I I said I was going to do this couch to five k, wasn't I? Yeah. And I haven't done it yet. My trainers are still in the in the bedroom, and I haven't. So you say they're still in the box? Then. Yeah, they are. They're still in the box. So and you I was that there. I was eating my crisps, and I had a bar of chocolate. And one of the lads said, oh, "Is that couch to five k going?" It was. He's changed it now. It's couch to coffin. I was like, oh, jeez, lads. <laughs> I said, the only couch to 5K you'll be doing is couch to 5,000 calories. Yes. Well, I said that, that when he first said he was going to do it. I'm going to burn it off. Well, I'm, uh, like I said, I get a bit more exercise now I'm retired. I mean, I've been... I used to ride a bike regularly, and during the pandemic, I rode the equivalent of the distance from Land's End to John and Rhodes. And the distance from um, to, 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 to Route 66. So in the, oh, year okay. of the pandemic, I did three and a half thousand miles on a push bike. That's okay. Good, mate. But you get back to work. Once you're back in work, you sit your ass in front of a computer, and I've done it intermittently, but now I'm starting to pick it back up again. So. Oh, you bought a bike, didn't you, Dave? Yeah, that's still uh, that's still in, in the wrapping as well. Oh, yeah, you can go out with the other Dave. Two Daves and two Daves and a push bike. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's another podcast, yeah. there. Yeah. That's a great yeah. yeah. 
Eighty bikers too. <laughs> Airless bikers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I got I got all the ideas. I just got to go with me. I I done the same with guitar and I bought thirty guitars. But uh, you don't live far away from me, do you, Dave? No, no. Right up the canal, and we'll go for right up the canal. Well, it's better if you rode down, <laughs> met me, <laughs> and we'll go down hill again. <laughs> You've got to go back up at the end of it. Yeah. That's the problem. I would get the missus to pick us up. She can chuck her bikes in the back of the car. Right, right, right up the canal is easy. Well, that's what I was doing. So I, I, I bought a mountain bike, well, I don't know, eight years ago, and I was riding back and forth the canal and stuff. And I really enjoyed it. And then I bought this one. But I just haven't got back into it. But I, I, I did enjoy it. I bought a better bike this time. This one's a, what did I buy? Sort of specialised. I bought this time because I have like a cheapy muddy, muddy fox one. Yeah. I bought one with twenty nine inch wheels because they're supposed to be easier to ride and and things like that. I just it's haven't. Stabilised, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm pretty stable on it. I'm pretty stable on it. You bought one, big, the, one with a big wheel. It's called a penny farthing. It's just my my twig legs don't want to pedal it. Actually, you've got oh. a pedal at moment. That's the problem. You got Wednesday legs, who? Yeah, I have, yeah. When's they going to be legs? Yeah, that's it. Or Daisy. Some days they run and some days they don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's your offer, Dave. Get back out on your bike. Yeah, Two sounds Dave's, good to me. Do Dave's bike in. Because, I, like I said, if it's dry, I'll go, I'll go out three times a floor, three or four times a week. Mm. Well, you don't even I mean, have time for that. Well, I did. Like I said, I went out the other day. I um, I like my kind of bike riding. I, I ride up the canal. And I got to go to wharf, and I stopped at a cup of tea and a bacon sandwich. Mm. And then, and then the missus picked me up and brought me on. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was doing. I was riding up the go to wharf and back down, but I won't stop. And I, I take like a bottle of water or some drink out and then ride back down there. We'll have to organise this, David. Is yeah. it for me? Good to me. Yeah, he what can't. He like? can't have a bacon sandwich and a cup of tea. His missus won't give him any pocket money. No, that's right. <laughs> but he can definitely get out on his bike. I need to do, do the summer. exercise. I do. I he's, do. Su he's suffering from PlayStation Thumb at the moment. I've I've not been playing the PlayStation, I'll be honest, because I bought... Remember I showed you that Evercade thing, the little handheld thing I bought? Yeah. Oh. They've released Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3 on it, and I've been playing Tomb Raider. No, okay. A little handheld, but the screen is small. I got to take my glasses off to be able to play it. But it's oh, actually, it. yeah, it's banging. So good, so good. Three consoles is that now, Dave? Um, I got four under the bed. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I don't know, about 17, 18 consoles. And, uh... It's like guitars, you can only play one at a time. Why do you yeah. need that? Well, they're, the, they're the main ones, and then I've got about eight or nine handheld consoles. I'm so and glad a couple I of never... plug and plays as well. I'm so glad I never got into playing computer games. Yeah, me too. I'm the same. I'm the same. Yeah. Are you are just so glad, or are you just so, I think you're just too old? Because oh. yeah, I think. I mean, you know, if you're retired, you're obviously older than me. But, um, a fair bit, I would imagine. I don't know. I, I don't know how old are you, 65, 66? Yeah, 65 in October. I mean, you're, not, you're not that much older than me then. But, you're uh, any better than I am then. Yeah, uh, don't you believe it, mate. <laughs> you can't move. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think we missed that. Because of our age, you know, we missed that sort of, we're a generation older and yeah. missed it. I mean, I missed computers in school as well. So as I left school, computers were coming in. Yeah, they didn't have computers when I was in school. Yeah. No. Not till a long year after that either. But yeah, well, I was, I was, I was young when the, the arcades were out, weren't they? So yeah. like the fairground, would, the fair would come to Cumbran every year when we had the carnival. And they always had a like an arcade section there, on the back of a wagon. And I'd be in the arcades all the time. I, I I'm not interested in like the big rides. I was always playing the video games. And you know, I started with the Sit Down Space Invaders and Pac Man, and yeah. just grew up with all the other ones. And then I started having home computers. Then didn't I? So I was playing them at home all the time. So yeah, I mean, I've never my, grown up. My two, you know, they are twenty seven and thirty. So they've always had computer games. Yeah. Same yeah, the eldest one plays games, the youngest one just plays Pokemon. Or 
always have done. He's always, that's the only thing he's ever taken to his Pokemon. Yeah, it's massive still, I don't know. Still huge. But I was, I was after Pokemon, so I didn't uh, I didn't get into that, but my boy's into Pokemon. It's a bit lost on me. I, yeah, me too. Proud of it. I find it, it's kind of like nostalgic as well, because that's why I got a lot of the older video consoles, because it's stuff that I was growing up with when I was 14, you know, 13, 14, and I was playing them, and it's nice to to touch and feel those things again, do you know what I mean? So, like, all the stuff I got here... None of them are really any of my original ones that I had because I've had them all, sold them, and then bought them all again as an old man, just like out of nostalgia. So mm, I was touching other things when I was fourteen. I'm not going to go back there. <laughs> I stand up like David Jason. But yeah, that's kind of like my my nostalgia and movies. I'm I'm massive on movies as well. And again, that's the same. All the movies I like watching are eighties, eighties movies. What was that new Crow movie like, Dave? Um, do you know what? I, I I really enjoyed it. I gotta be honest. Um, and the reason why I enjoyed it is because they made it different to the original one. If okay. they if they had just remade the Brandon Lee one, I I I wouldn't have enjoyed it. And there's no way it would have been in. You know, it would yeah. have been good. For me, obviously, the Brandon Lee original is still far better. Oh, yeah. The effects are obviously dated in it because it was made in 93, 94 and released in 95 or whatever. But the new one, I, I, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I, it's something I definitely, you know, I'd watch not over and over, but I'd watch it again mm. and again. It's good. Really enjoyed it. And the actor in it was awesome. I think he's, he's out of um, It. Um, and he was in John Wick 4. He was kind of like the main dude in John Wick 4. Ah, that's who I was wondering where he's from. Yeah, right. yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I can't remember what he was called, but he was he was the guy that, you know, had to, yeah. he made him do a duel at the end, didn't he? And, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think he's pretty, you know, he's quite a renowned actor, but the, the concept of it was slightly different to the original, so, you know, it made it acceptable for me. Mm -hmm. So it was good, it was good. Still dark and, you know, gritty and stuff. Yeah, it was good. Because I got the second Joker coming out now, only because I found that like really um, upsetting. The first Joker, because it was he was so messed up mentally. I just found it really difficult to watch the Joker. I got to be honest. I'm I'm trying to think where the where it's going to come in with a link to Gotham and Batman. I I, I don't at get it. See, at the end of Batman, the Batman film, when they had. Um... The Riddler in the prison. You could hear the Joker talking to the Riddler in the prison. I, is that the one with the new guy in it? Yeah, I've not seen that one. It's, it's a good watch. It's three hours, but it's a good watch. Hmm. For all they're just bringing out a series about the penguin, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's another thing I didn't know. My missus told me this yesterday. Oh, the right, penguin in the Penguin in Batman. Yeah, was um, what's it in the Irish? Actor. Colin uh, Farrell. Colin Farrell, yeah. In the series, doesn't yeah. Like, doesn't like anything like him. No. Nope. I know, I know. He's pretty boring, Colin Farrell, isn't he? He's done some great movies, mine, hasn't he? In he's, fairness. He's a boring actor, though, isn't he? Um, I don't know. Have you seen The Gentleman that he's in? He's bloody brilliant, isn't he? I haven't seen the movie. I've seen the, the series. Yeah, he's, he's in the movie. He's bloody awesome. He's really good, isn't he? He's I an absolute nutcase. Yeah, I've not seen either of those. Yeah, he's he's yeah, really he, good in that. And like there was one that I used to like before where he was he was he was in the FBI. Um but they went he was like training. What the hell was that called? Might have been the cadet or something like that, but he was in that as well and that was really good. But I like can't a lot go, of the other go. stuff tends to be a bit deeper, doesn't it? Because he's done he does like a lot of Irishy folky. I can't get over how bog Irish he is when he's talking. Yeah, he is yeah. proper Irish, isn't he? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. Like I said I, I watched that. Um, Those about to die, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was a good little mini series. I was just going to ask, well, give me some stuff to to watch because um, it's good. I'm re I'm started watching that chaos just now with uh, Goldblum. Oh, that's yeah, good. That's I enjoyed that. Watch, yeah, I'm on the second episode of that. I so. finished that. That's actually if you, if you know your Greek history, yeah, it's actually quite watchable. But you don't yeah. really have to know it because it tells you the story as you're going along. Yeah, so yeah, I, that's enjoy, good. I enjoyed that. Um, yeah. What else? Is on Netflix? Yeah. Yeah. Was it? I'll have to have a look at yeah. that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the next one I want to watch. Slow Horses, if you haven't seen that. Okay. I've always watched that. Yeah, he said it's, it's good. Yeah. There's four it's series old, on it. it. Yeah, there's four series on there. Wow. Okay. Okay. There's only about six episodes per series, but that's yeah. a good watch. Okay. I'm halfway through the new series of The Boys, so... Um... Oh, I love her. It's just <laughs> immense. It is so good. It's what what the hell is going on in this? It's just it's um it's just immense. And I and I love the generation. I watched that as well. He, oh man, it's so funny. It's I, I just see the funny side of it all. You haven't seen a movie today. No. Yeah, they're like superheroes gone bad. They all got yeah. like egos and attitudes and they yeah, no, I've seen and, they do, and they're they run by a big conglomerate organization that's just worried about money and social media and views and social media yeah. and they're covering up all the things that they're doing. It's, yeah. it's hysterical. It's so good. Yeah. It really is good. And it's yeah, true to the graphic novel as well. Like, sorry? It's true to the graphic novel. Like the, the, is it? The it's I thought he was going to try and tell you the true story. Yeah, I thought he's... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I, I thought that was coming as well. Gra the graphic novel is based on, they've stuck to the story as well. Yeah, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I like the actors in it, man, and I think the actors suit the roles really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't think of the main dude in it, but he's uh, Carl Urban, Urban, isn't he? Oh, man, he's Urban. brilliant. Yeah. He is so good. The guy, the guy who plays Homeland, have you seen him in Banshee? Oh, no, I haven't, no. That's another series you want to watch. That's what he did. It was five series of Banshee. It's on Sky. So, yeah. So, give that a watch. Okay. Yeah, I'll have that. Because, like, we, we sit down and watch it. And it's it, normally me and Sarah will sit down and we'll watch series. Like, yeah. we're not allowed to watch the next episode without each other and stuff. Yeah. So, I did the same with that on The Boys. But she'd just sit there and she'd be huffing and puffing and frowning and shaking her head. <laughs> she still watched every single yeah, one. Exactly. She'd be like, Are we doing yeah. another one? Yeah. So, yeah. She'd still be huffing and puffing all the way through it. But uh, so I think secretly she enjoyed it. But yeah. it was just so wrong. She didn't want to like make out it was acceptable. Do you know what I mean? She probably yeah. worried what I put on after it. <laughs> yeah, to give you a, 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 an understanding of it, in the last series, there was a guy who could shrink himself to a minute size. Do you remember okay. that guy? Like and they were at a party and uh, he called up somebody's, you know, private parts and, and grew to full size. Oh, oh, that okay. So that's what, split, split. what do you do? Split him in half? Yeah, well, put a human felching. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then in the in the one where they're in university, there's a young girl that she can make herself really small if she vomits. And then she was actually the next scene. Then she he said, "Oh, will you do it for me?" And then she's climbed the board. Is his old boy? doing the business for him like as a little miniature character yeah. and Sarah's like what are you watching I said oh it's just brilliant it's so funny because <laughs> we were watching all the Marvel films as well at the same time so I, I was watching the Marvel films thinking god wouldn't it be funny if he could do that instead <laughs> but yeah it's brilliant it's such a good laugh I've got 